Okay, um, so um, for those of you who are maybe not aware, ADA, um, we're a UK based company based in Cambridge. Um, we manufacture KVM solutions. So while broadcast is one of the industries we focus on, our technology actually gets rolled out into almost every industry vertical. So on a weekly basis, we're talking with companies in utilities, oil and gas, um, security. Um, <coughs> we talk to people in traffic control systems. We're in a, a number of different industries, but what we've seen over the last five to six years has been a real increase in deployment of our type of technology into broadcast facilities in um, really a front-end um, style. Um, KVM, for those of you who don't know, stands for Keyboard, Video and Mouse. And originally the technology was designed to give people access to servers in a day that you would have had a server room full of devices that you might need to <coughs> manage on an ad hoc basis. What we've seen a, a trend in the industry is to move towards front-end systems. So that is um, extension of graphics card and control signals for edit desks in broadcast studios for desktop PCs and control rooms. Everything's coming to the very front, the actual user, rather than an admin or IT role. Um, so our kind of position in the broadcast market at the moment is actually twofold. We work both in live broadcast environments, um, in areas where you need to flexibly be able to move between lots of different computers very quickly. And at the same time, we're trying to give the high-end <coughs> performance that's required in um, editing applications, uh, visual effects kinds of environments. So our customers have a, a number of different challenges. Um, the first one is just this ever increasing amount of IT infrastructure that exists within um, broadcast environments. So the more computers exist, um, we're trying to keep the numbers of people down, the ability to actually switch and control those computers from different locations. Um, the second is the limited amount of redundancy options that people have. And we, as we rely on this technology, whether it's network technology or IT infrastructure, being able to actually um, rely on that technology, we would like to, um, so you can, manufacturers like Cisco, obviously we rely on them for, for every day, um, every morning. The first thing you do is interact with some sort of technology which is actually being driven by networking um, and IT. But can you rely on that in, at a critical moment and how do you handle that. Um, the heat and noise that's emitted by storage, by networking, by computer devices, where those go. So we have a saying at Adder which is machines with machines and people with people. Our goal is constantly to remove all the storage devices, the PCs from the working in area. So when you walk into an MCR, there isn't the noise necessarily of the machines that are running there. When you walk into an edit suite, you don't hear the hum of um, fans. You're concentrated on the content. Um, accessibility, um, we talked about security on a number of the talks this afternoon. For us, one of the real problems that our customers have in every industry is the accessibility that users, um, and mostly their own staff, but external contractors have to data, because it maybe exists on storage or it exists on a PC. So for us, we are all about that physical factor, how easy is it to get to that content, and then how much do you trust your own employees or the contractors that you're working with who you do need to give access to. And there is two sides to this coin. You have give as much access as you can, but giving the right levels of access. Um, and then workflow limitations. And one of the biggest challenges we see, certainly here in Soho, with the layout of buildings and the way that um, infrastructure is available to people, is how do I allocate resources to the right people? Um, if an edit machine is unavailable, um, do I lose that space? Does that space become unusable? Or if the space is in use, does the resource, the computing resource, become unavailable? So we're actually trying to separate these two things. Um, we talk about a KVM switch. Um, for those of you who are familiar, this is the most common thing that people um, are aware of that we produce. The ability for this screen, keyboard and mouse to connect to multiple computers wherever they might be. Um, and typically that's instantaneous switching. The user gets to choose which computer they're in control of. Now, extension is probably the more common thing we're seeing in this market right now um, and this is where I talk about getting the PC itself the hardware um, the HP Z840 which is putting out a huge amount of power getting that away from the user area so that's what we're we're looking at doing here and we've progressed that slightly with the introduction of the KVM matrix so here what we have is, um, is there a laser here we've got three computers and we've got three user positions. And the idea is that anything can interconnect. Now, 
that provides a huge amount of flexibility in live broadcast environments. Um, if this monitor fails, the users from these desks can access those systems and keep us up and running. If this PC fails, the user can switch to a redundant system. So if you've got automation systems and you have um, a problem with your networking, being able to switch to a secondary machine and continue the broadcast becomes very important. And you might have multiple people who are having to interact. So the ability for user A and user B both to view the same PC at the same time. Maybe they're in different rooms. Maybe it's a presenter in a radio studio and maybe it's um, an editor outside in a gallery. So the one thing that we've seen a development towards is IP technology taking up this central position. And this is something that Adder has particularly led over the last four or five years. Um, there's a couple of simple reasons. One of the reasons is distance. So KVM extension, um, we have a challenge of physically getting the video. Um, users in edit environments are using high powered graphics. We're using expensive graphics cards to deliver the right content. We then need to get it down the cable to the user in the edit studio. So this distance that you can extend has always been limited depending on the type of infrastructure you have. Um, in the analog world, it was very easy. We could get distant, uh, large distances very easily. We just saw a slow degradation of quality. In the digital world, using that same CATEX infrastructure and the old techniques meant we could go for 50 meters, but at 51, you have completely black video. So you have this binary on or off application. In IP, we can pretty much do anything. We can route tens of users down a single fiber cable from building to building. It gives us a huge amount of flexibility in the design of the system. So the product we have is a product called Adalink Infinity. It's been on the market for five or six years. Um, we're at revision four at the moment, and we've introduced um, new technology both at the node end and in the management um, area over the last couple of years. Um, and at NAB, we launched uh, version four of our management system, which brought in a whole host of new security protocols and um, new technologies. So here we have that same switching infrastructure, but now instead of having a central piece of hardware, we're now talking about the Cisco's or the HP's providing this infrastructure and it can look um, and feel a lot different. Although we're using the same core nodes and the same management system, you can have a completely different design from one building to the next. So um, here's just a quick example of a, an MCR. We've got our users sat at the desk. Um, they can all access their various machines, but the machines are now located in a server room which is air conditioned. The server room's locked so it's secure, only the right people have access to those machines. Now one of the things that we are able to offer is actually the limited access that the user has to these machines. So the first thing you can choose is who can access um, the system, what machines do they have access to, and then what level of access. And that can be as finite as which USB devices can they plug in that we'll use. So suddenly users can't plug in USB storage because you've limited that within the KVM solution. So no longer can they transfer content to their own private USB sticks or storage. Um, I'll skip over some of the examples into um, maybe one we can go into a little bit more detail of. Um, the farm group rolled out our Infinity system across um, a number of their buildings in Soho um, about 18 months ago. Um, what we have here is an example of um, a number of edit suites, I think it's 38 in total, all with a single desk running either a dual head or a dual link screen, keyboard, mouse, and um, peripherals, Wacom tablets. Now, all of the machines for each building are then located in a central control room or a central server room. So the engineering department and support departments have access to that machine room. They can go in, they can carry out maintenance, but the user in the room is not disturbed. So while this maintenance takes place on the machines, no one has to come in and out of these buildings or these rooms in this case. Now, we can also start to allocate the resources, the Avid systems they've got, the Autodesk systems, to the individual edit suite when it's needed. So the farm operate with a number of external contractors. In fact, one of their buildings is dedicated to external contractors. And so scheduling team are able to route the right machine to the right room when it's needed. So no longer do they have this um, tie between the allocation of the room and the allocation of the computing resource. They're flexibly moved um, in the right way. And so the ROI on actually rolling out the KVM um, is really quickly gained because they can hit maximum occupancy, they can always keep the rooms filled with the right people, 
Um, in the event that there's some downtime, let's say a machine fails for any reason or a license um, expires, they can switch this user to a completely different machine instantly. And by instantly, we're talking about under half a second. Um, and then just being able to limit the amount of configuration processes you have to go when you want to change that room. Just being able to reconfigure it on the fly. Have presets where we can set up groups of rooms in a single button. Being able to access those remotely. Um, and we have some tools for actually accessing the dedicated hardware remotely. So we can have someone coming in to do support on say an avid system from anywhere in the world so there is the ability to bring people in over the WAN into the building as well. Um, I'll skip over some of the finer technical details at this stage. Um, illumination is another um, application that we've had for the system that's gone in in the last six months. Um, they've actually used the tool to um, improve the way that they preview to clients um, and preview internally. So they have um, edit suites um, which the, uh, the editors will be working within. And when they want to send something up for client review, they can send that to a master room. They can come in here, set the machine up, they get everything ready, they walk into the room, and then they, <coughs> they use the KVM system to log back into the machine that they were originally controlling. So there's no physical tie between this computer and this room. Those are completely separated by the network. Um, Smoke and Mirrors here in Soho again, um, just rolled out the system last year. This is all driven uh, or driving Autodesk flame systems. Um, in total, we've got about 50 user stations. Um, the key here was the ability to handle high frame rates over IP without loss. So one of the things that Adder does very differently from those in the market is we have a pixel perfect um, algorithm for delivering our content across the network. What that means in reality is the bandwidths that we're using to deliver video are very high in comparison to some of those we're used to with H.264 and, and similar codecs. But in terms of performance, they're significantly better. We're delivering pixel perfect. Um, and some of the other industries that rely on that technology are areas like medical imaging. So people are using this technology to make medical diagnosis. Um, Twicken and Film Studios is another UK-based project that we did. This was a dubbing theatre. So this is an application where we've got um, probably in around 20 um, screens or computers driving each dubbing theatre. We've got three in total. And again, they're located in different areas, so they can all be linked on a fibre ring. They're all being able to talk to each other. So any desk location can talk to any PC in the back end. Um, I know we're short for time, so I'll cut it short for any questions. Um, hopefully that gives you an over um, sight of Adder and KVM technology, and if you've got any questions, we'll happily answer them now or Mark and the team later on. Thank you. Thank you.